We have seen the modulation. It's time to look at the demodulation for digital carrier systems. We'll look at how to demodulate ASK, PSK, and DBSK differential phase shift keying, and we'll also look at the frequency shift keying scenario. Now that we have seen modulation of carrier systems, ASK, BSK, and FSK, now we look at the demodulation of ASK and BSK. Later, we'll look at the demodulation of FSK. Now, how do we receive, how do we demodulate in general? We have two ways, either we use coherent detection or non-coherent detection. Coherent means we require to generate locally the carrier with the same phase as the received one. Coherent detection is in general relatively complicated because of the carrier acquisition and it's good at low signal to noise ratio and it has an excellent performance. But of course, it's complicated. Now, the other option is to use non coherent detection. So, for amplitude shift keying, we usually use non coherent detection. Otherwise, the, the entire simplicity that we gain from ASK is lost. The main reason for using ASK is being simple. The amplitude, the information is in amplitude. So you still can be used, you can use you still can use coherent, but it doesn't make a lot of sense because if you want to go for coherent, you can use a PSK and others. So once again, ASK is usually demodulated using non-coherent without going into the phase. But of course, in principle, it can be done with coherent. For the phase shift keying, PSK, the information is in the phase. So it makes sense to use coherent detection, similar to the analog scenario. But it can be also received non-coherently using ingenious or genius method. How? Remember in digital, we are just sending either, for example, in the case of binary, we either send zero or one. Instead of locating or generating a local carrier, we can use the previous data, as we can see here in the table, uh, or the diagram, as our carrier. For example, we have two branches here. Okay, here is the coming data. It's either minus or plus because we have PSK, the phase changes. It's like the sign is changing. For the binary case, for the binary PSK, it's somehow similar to ASK. It's because the information is always in the amplitude. Changing from 0 to 180 degrees is like multiplying by a minus sign. So I can use the incoming signal and store it in a delay, and then the next symbol will be compared with the previous one. So I can tell whether the bit has changed or not. So this carrier has similar frequency, similar phase, I mean adjusted in phase. So we don't need to look to generate local. This is called non-coherent because there is no dedicated carrier circuit. But what we can tell is whether the data has changed or not. So to solve this, we're going to use differential encoding, and the net result is called DBSK. What does DBSK stand for? Differential PSK, or differentially encoded phase shift keying. Let me recall the meaning of precoding, like we had before, or differential encoding. It means when I want to transmit the data, I will send identical like previous, if we have one, and I'm going to change or send the opposite if we have zero. So the information at the transmitter side will be represented in the change of the phase rather than in the phase itself. Now, before I proceed to the next slide, I'd like to make sure that this genius circuit, uh, you should be able to redraw so that you indicate you understand. What you do is you delay one bit duration, you compare it, you use it as a carrier, and then of course, once you multiply, you can use a low pass filter and then make your, up your decision. Is it positive or negative to tell whether you are, you're having zero or one? So again, ASK is non-coherent. Usually PSK can be done with coherent, but with the following smart circuit, we can use non-coherent. Let's see more examples or a full example in the next slide. Non-coherent demodulation of PSK. Now I'm showing you the idea with bits. One, one, zero, zero, one, zero, zero. This is the original data. What you see here, the, the waveform is the differentially encoded waveform. Okay. Now, the differentially encoded waveform is basically says, okay, I'm just going to draw this. So we have, let's say that we start with one. So one means sent identical like previous. One, again one. Zero, it means change. So I was sending one, I'm going to make it zero. 
Now one says sent identical like previous, so the previous was zero, zero, the previous was zero, zero, and then we have zero. We have to change. We have zero. We have to change. Zero, change one, keep. keep. So what we transmit is not the, the original data. This line is the differentially encoded waveform. We got this by looking at how things change. This is called pre-coding or differential encoding. Now at the receiver side, okay, if you look at the sequence, we get uh, the sequence and then we can decode it using the following circuit. For example, I have, I am having the first one is one, so it's going to be stored as positive. The, income, the next one is one, so it means they are the same. I get a positive, so it's it's one. Then I get another one. The previous one is one. I get one. I get zero. It's different. So so we can decode with the following circuit. Now, if identical like previous, okay. If the bits are identical like previous, okay. Then you get a cosine here, a cosine there. Their multiplication. Why the green signal? The green signal is going to be cosine squared. Okay, whether minus minus or plus plus. So if identical, I get cosine squared. Cosine squared, as you know, we can simplify it into one half one plus cosine double the angle. And of course, at the output of the low pass filter, I have two terms. This term is high frequency, so it's going to cancel, and I get a squared over two. This is positive. It means the bit was one. What if they are not identical? What if they are What's it, what, what if the incoming sequence is different than the previous one? In that case, we will get minus sign. So we'll get y equal to minus a squared because we are multiplying a signal with the opposite. So you get a minus cosine squared. Cosine squared can be represented using trigonometry one half cosine double the angle, one half times one plus cosine double the angle. And then at the out of the low pass filter, this high frequency term is going to cancel. I get the minus. So minus indicate zero, positive indicate one. With this circuit, with using DBSK, we have uh, we are able to demodulate uh, non-coherently without having a real dedicated circuit for carrier demodulation. Using the fact that in digital, we are having only one of two scenarios: in digital binary phase shift keying. An example, if you want, as an example, decode the above sequence and demonstrate that you recover the data. We tried this but I would like you to continue with the full example. Now, for the demodulation of FSK, we'd like you to build two possibilities, two figures for non-coherent and coherent demodulation of FSK. How can you tell, okay, if somebody give you the following sequence, how can you build a circuit that can tell that we have one or zero? Suppose you know that high frequency means one, for example, and low frequency means zero. How can, what can you do? Non-coherent means we want to build a circuit that does not require local carrier generation. And the second one is uh, the coherent requires local generation. So you can pause the video and you can think about yourself about how to build this. If you can, that will reflect good understanding. I'm going to present the answer now. If you want to try, you can pause the video and try. Now, you see here, the diagram that shows the non-coherent detector. I will take the signal here and I plan to have two different band pass filter. Those filters are centered around the frequency of the zero case and that of the frequency of uh, the case of one. So you can, at the upper branch, you get this part of the signal. This is not going to pass because it's a lower frequency and it's going to be taken care by the lower filter. The reason those two filters were able to split the signal is that they have different frequency. As you can see now, we have made the problem into amplitude, kind of amplitude shift keying. So the upper envelope will just take the envelope and remove the details because in every bit we just need to know whether it's positive, high or not. So at the out of the envelope detector, we get the following curve, of course ideally. In the lower branch, we get the following curve. Now, remember in digital demodulation, digital uh, demodulation, you have a sampling circuit. You have a switch that closes and input every one TB, every bit, every, every one bit duration. Because we don't need the output at every instant. We need to make a decision every one bit duration. So at the middle of the, of the bit, we make a decision. What happens is now, 
We'll take one reading here, for example, let me just use, um, uh, for example, green. We take one reading here. Okay, one reading here at this instant of time. You get here higher value than the lower. They are going to go to the comparator. We get positive here and zero, for example. And the comparator will decide that the upper branch is stronger, so it's going to give you the, the bit for zero. Okay. And at the other case where we have one here, it's going to get zero from upper branch, and it's going to decide one, and so on and so forth. So this is called non-coherent detector because there is no local carrier. If you want to build a coherent detector, you will start with demodulation. So the incoming signal, the same signal will be fed here. I'm going to demodulate the signal using two branches. Either I will shift it from the frequency of zero or the frequency of one. So there's a T here. Okay. Now, uh, after we deco, after we demodulate, we're going to use a low bass filter, low bass filter, and then we compare the upper branch. If the signal was sent at zero, something will appear here, but nothing will here will appear here, and vice versa. So we use a comparator, very similar to the, the previous circuit, but the basic principle is different. The second one is coherent detector. The first one is non-coherent. So um, you should be able to redraw these two as a test for your understanding. So you can pause the video and close your eyes and try to sketch the two uh, to get uh, a test whether you can uh, demodate FSK or not.